So without further ado, here is Team Breadcake with their app, DevCake. Take it away. <laughs> Thank you very much, Doug. Can everyone hear me all right? Cool, lovely. So we are team Red Cake, and our app is Dev Cake. Next slide, please. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So introducing you to the team. Uh, myself, I'm Alex. I'm Brad. I'm Danny. And I'm John. So that is the Red Cake team. And now we'll move on to the app itself. So Dev Cake. What's the first word that you think of? What's, what do you think of when you hear dev cake? Obviously learning, right? <laughs> so we created this web app as an aid to self-learning for developers. We strive to bring together learning resources from across the internet into one easy to use space. As with the rest of the group and most developers, when I first started to learn to code, I struggled to find information on how or what I needed to do or, or how to develop further. This is a problem we have solved with DevCake. By giving users custom a customizable feed of educational content delivered across a range of media, including podcasts, books, courses, and much more. I'll pass you over to Brad to do the demo. Hello, everyone. OK, welcome to DevCake, everyone. OK, so the first thing that you see when you click on the app is the login page. OK, here you've got the option to log in if you're an existing user. If that's not the case, then you've also got the option to register as a new user. OK, so once you've entered your details, you can press the sign up button. OK, the next, next thing that you see is the topic choice page. OK, so here you've got a wide variety of different, different topics, languages, and frameworks to choose from. OK, so you can choose what you want to follow. OK, you can choose as many of these as you want. Once you've, pick it, once you've finished picking your options, and you click next, this then takes you to the media choice page. This is where you choose how you want to learn. Okay, so you can choose from books, podcasts, videos, courses, okay, anything you want. When you click next, it then takes you to the home page. Okay, down the middle of the home page is the main feed. Okay, on each individual item, you've got a bookmark button, which you can add to your reading list in your profile. You've also got a learn more button, which is essentially just a URL link to the content. Um, this is also an infinite scroll. So when it scrolls to the bottom, it sends an API request to the back end to get the next page of contents and you can keep scrolling. To the left here, we've got the main nav bar, which you can access the user profile. Um, in the user profile, we can have a look what topics and languages we're following. We can also browse through our reading list and look what's already been bookmarked. Okay, to the right, we've got the topic suggestion bar which, where you can just follow topics on the fly instead of having to go back into the topic choice page. And you can, of course, unfollow and unbookmark any items you want. OK, then if you've finished learning a certain language or a framework and you want to learn something else, you can, of course, of course go back into the topic choice page and then untick and tick any items you want your feed to consist of. OK, you can also change the media types. And then when you go back onto the home page, obviously this will all be different content because you've changed, you've changed your options. And then when, once you finish learning, you can of course click the log out button, which logs the user out. Log out button. <laughs> Nailed it. There we go. That's it for DevCake. I'll pass you on to Danny, who's going to explain the back end. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm just going to touch on how we approached the back end for this project and talk you through some of the tech we ended up using. So we first sat down and we just talked about what topics and technologies we were interested in, what we felt might suit this project. And one thing that was unanimous was that we all wanted to have a go at TypeScript. We liked that. It was a different way of working by bringing in the static typing. But we didn't have to go out and learn a whole load of new syntax uh, with it being so similar to JavaScript. Um, so then we did some research into how people tend to build backends with TypeScript. Uh, and we saw a lot of this framework, Nest.js, uh, which is built on top of Express and just lets you generate a lot of the boilerplate that you need for a REST API with a nice command line tool. But we did end up going back and just using Express just for the fact that it's so well documented. And uh, there's a lot of resources out there so it's uh, to reference. 
Um, as for the database, we went with MongoDB purely for the fact that we'd done a lot of work with Postgres through the course. So we wanted to try something non-relational. Um, we liked the object-oriented approach that Mongo used. And um, specifically, we used the cloud version, which was really handy. It meant we could just log on and insert documents as and when we needed them. And the plan was to seed our database with a load of uh, content from a few third-party APIs. But luckily, we found an API learning object that was essentially doing this for us, already plugged into a lot of providers that we plan to use. We powered the queries to this API with some data from Stack Overflow using their annual developer insight survey um, to make sure we had content from relevant, useful topics. Overall, we had about 7,000 different documents across 30 something topics and 13 categories of media. Um, the whole app was built with Jest. We built all the endpoints using TDD uh, and we had like daily daily stand-ups and scrums and whatnot, uh, making us an agile team. So I'm going to pass you on to John now, who's going to touch on the front end. Thanks very much. Um, so the front end of the app is built mainly using React. Um, we did originally in the spiking phase look at using a different uh, framework or a library such as Svelte, um, but we decided that um, with having to use TypeScript, it was best for us to stick to something that we already used. Um, and alongside that, we really wanted to sort of utilize the MERN stack because of how popular it is in the industry. Um, what we've done is we've used React Router alongside User Context, and that um, will sort of link you between different pages and disable you being able to access things that you uh, perhaps shouldn't, like the content feed if you're not logged in. Um, and we styled the app using a mix of, um, sort of CSS and then styled components, which we found really, really good for sort of um, keeping everything in one place and, uh, and making it a nice sort of dev friendly way of styling things as we went through. Um, as Brad's already touched on, we, uh, we implemented an infinite scroll. We thought this was the best way of using pagination for our app because we had um, such a wide range of different contents. It made sense to use that for the user experience rather than having sort of pages to go through. And then um, we used local storage then to persist our user data between sessions if we wanted to. Uh, I'm going to also talk about the future of DevCake. And uh, this starts with interactivity. So one thing that we wanted to implement um, from the start was uh, the ability for users to sort of talk to each other, recommend different things that they'd used, maybe write reviews or comment on things. Uh, but we didn't quite manage to get that far. So that's definitely something we'd like to add for the future. Uh, we also thought about the idea of making the content sort of um, appear based on how much users were interacting with it. So the most popular stuff um, from our users' perspective was at the top of the feed. Uh, we also then want to implement a live feed. So at the minute, the, the sort of source of truth, if you like, for our data uh, is that Stack Overflow survey that happens once a year. Um, we would, in the future, like to sort of implement other sources so we can cross-reference uh, and make sure that we're keeping up with the industry um, as it sort of changes. And then finally, more content. So at the minute, we're very reliant on Stack Overflow and then the uh, Learning Objectives API. So we'd look to expand on that to make sure that we have the most relevant and the best to use content. I'm going to pass you over to Brad and Alex, who are going to take us through the challenges. OK, so the main challenges. OK, I think, well, I think one of the main challenges we encountered was the new tech that we was using, such as TypeScript and MongoDB and their associated packages. Um, I think with anything, uh, in technology, it takes a, anything takes a bit of getting used to, um, but we quickly came to see the positives of, of all of them. I think TypeScript setup was quite heavy, um, so the app started a bit slow, um, and the fact that we were so comfortable with JavaScript um, and we were so used to it meant, it meant it was quite difficult to become comfortable with the TypeScript compiler, um, but once we did, we really saw the benefits of seeing errors, sorry, really start to see the benefits of getting errors up front as opposed to later on in development. Okay, another thing we struggled with was settling on the functionality our minimum viable product should have. Uh, I think with it being our first app, we had all built from scratch. We all had quite a lot of ideas and it was hard not to run away with them all given the time frame we had to build it in. Alex? Cool. So. Often in these presentations, you don't see a positive side. You often get the challenges, but not the positives. So one positive for us was creative freedom. Like Brad was saying about the MVP, we had a lot of ideas to start off with. 
And that was good. Being able to put your ideas to paper and then seeing them grow into a fully fledged app really gave us confidence that we we are developers and we can do this. It, it was a really good feeling. Uh, secondly is the team. We created a strong bond as a team, <laughs> to say the least. And um, the morale's always been high. Everyone's always been around to help, uh, regardless of the time. And it's been it's been great. So I just wanted to publicly thank the team for their efforts. Any questions?